Hello there. In this video today, we'll be discussing the subject of classification. Now, classification, simply put, are a system that groups organisms based upon common features that they share. So we'll be talking a little bit about the history, how to use it, and what is comprised of the taxonomic categories. Let's get started. So the first one to ever go ahead and start to classify organisms was Aristotle. So a philosopher, he was the first man to develop a system to classify organisms. And he broke these up into two separate kingdoms, plants and animals. Now, he subdivided each of these kingdoms of plants and animals. Plants were based upon their division of size. So you had the small plants, the herbs, the medium-sized plants, the shrubs, and the tall ones, which were the trees. Animals, however, were based upon the habitat in which they were found in. So, for example, it was broken up into land, sea, and air. However, the problem with this was plants tend to go ahead and grow over time. And animals, well, as you can see, a duck goes ahead and satisfies all three categories of land, sea, and air. How about that? So, enter a gentleman by the name of Carolus Linnaeus. He went ahead and improved the classification system by basing his grouping upon physical features that these organisms had. So Linnaeus has the universal name, also known as binomial nomenclature. Think of it like a first and last name, so a two-name system. So all the organisms are given a universal name that are used by all scientists. Now this is very helpful considering a lot of common names are used depending on where you're at. The name is comprised of two names, just like a first and last name. The genus is the first name. It's capitalized and tends to come first. The second is the species name. Now this is lowercase and comes second. And when going ahead and freehanding these, both names will be underlined, both the genus and the species. If you're going ahead and typing it, you can use italics, which also works. So for example, the Taliputes modicus, genus being the Taliputes, and species being the Moticus, is the scientific name for the three-banded armadillo. Now, like we said earlier, common names can be incredibly misleading depending on where you live. For example, this creature right here could be referred to as a puma, a cougar, or even a mountain lion depending on which area that you live in. Also, take a look at this. So we know that this is a seahorse. But, it's not a horse, it's a fish. So as you can see, depending on the name, the common name, it can be a tad bit misleading to what the organism actually is. Whereas the genus and species will give you the exact specific name of the organism. For example, we have this pinnacle of an organism right here, a great white shark. The kingdom is Animalia, which are mobile critters that have their, uh, cannot make their own food, and are contained in many cells. The phylum is chordata. Chordata corresponds with any organism that has a skeletal rod, so a spinal column, along with accompanying nerves. The class is chondorichthys. It's a fish with a cartilaginous skeleton. So it's a fish with a skeleton not entirely made of bone. The order is laminiformes, which are the mackerel or torpedo-shaped sharks. The family, once again, laminidae, corresponding to the body shape, the genus is Carcharodon, coming from the Greek word Carcharos, meaning ragged or pointed, and Odon, meaning tooth. And the species would be Carcharius, which is the Greek word for shark. So Carcharodon Carcharius, or great white shark, in Latin simply means ragged or pointed tooth shark. Now, as you can see, we covered all these categories from kingdom up to species. We'll be getting back to that in a second, but the modern classification system that we use uses Linnaeus's system of physical traits, but it adds a few things. For example, the comparison of body chemistry and developmental features. So it looks at the DNA sequence, certain proteins that are found inside the body, such as the hemoglobin or the cytochrome C, and will even also take into the account for developmental stages of the embryos, which can be seen in the lower left-hand corner down here. So the classification groups are the taxonomic categories. So like we had with uh, Go Racer and the way to remember other things, we have a mnemonic device. We have Dear King Philip came over for ginger snaps or grape soda or good sushi. 
however you remember it, you do you. So, what these are, each category is like a funnel. Starts off very broad, but gets more and more narrow until you are down to one specific species of organism. Deer corresponds with domain, king, kingdom, philip, phylum, came, class, over, order, for, family, ginger, genus, and snaps, species. So the classification taxa. Domain, the top of the funnel, is the largest taxonomic category, containing the most organisms. Now the domain will then contain one or more kingdoms, so we're getting more specific. So the domain, remember, domain contains the most organisms, it is the most broad category. Now each kingdom is then subdivided, or divided again, into phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. So the further down you go, the more specific you get until you are looking at one specific species of organism. And remember, the species, the most specific, or the bottom of the funnel, the most narrow, contains the fewest organisms, but has the most in common for physical features of the organism. So let's go through and break this down real quick. So for our domain, we have Eukarya, which are any organism that has a nucleus in its cells. The kingdom, Animalia. The phylum, Chordata. The class, Mammals. The order, Carnivores. The family, Philidae, or large cats. The genus, Panthera. And the species, Pardus. So if we go down through the entire list, we've narrowed it down from all organisms that have a nucleus, specifically down to a Panthera pardus or a jaguar. So that right there is going to go ahead and summarize all of the introduction to classification and the taxonomic categories. As always, if you have any questions, please go ahead and talk to your instructor. They'll help you get set on the right track. But without further ado, and now that that's said, now you know, and until next time, you go ahead and take care.